This video is mainly going to be a review of the JXC JXO hatchet uh, that was sent to me. So if you want to check that out and you just want to get the gist, whether I recommend it or not, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, um, check the timestamps in the video description and you can skip to there um, and you know not have to go through the whole video um, if that's what you're mainly interested in. But there's going to be a bunch of other things in this video that I think might be interesting to some of you. So I go over my method for using a file to set the bevel, uh, my trick for measuring angles when I don't have an angle gauge or it won't work for what I need and when I'm trying to measure the angle of an edge. And I also show uh, off my Kelly kettle um, and make some breakfast with it. And if you don't know what a kettle, Kelly kettle is, uh, that's a pretty great piece of kit. So uh, check that out if you're, if you're curious. Um, and otherwise, uh, Let's get on to the review. Okay, so I got a package in the mail, and I have been sent. Yes, I have been sent a package from JXE JXO or Jixo. And it's a new, it's a new hatchet. They would like me to try out. Tell them what they think. So I am going to do that. And um, well, I am very surprised. I am very surprised um, because this is not what I was expecting. Um, I was expecting a different model, uh, but this is the one that I wanted to try. So that's that's pretty neat. It's an actual surprise. Uh, unboxing. So yeah, there it is. JXE, JXO. And this is a slip fit axe or hatchet, um, a hand axe. And yeah, I can't, uh, I can't wait to try it out. So yeah, it looks, looks very interesting. Bits lined up. The handle, yeah, it's a slip fit, so in theory, should pop off. Yep. All right. So this is uh, this is pretty exciting. It's got a it's got a hammer pull end. I think that they they think that um, people are going to be most interested in this as a throwing as a throwing axe, but I actually am interested in it as a general purpose and bushcrafting axe. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about uh, this, little, this little flip fit. And uh, let's give it a try. Alright, so uh, before I get into the rest of the review, I think I'll, I'll just kind of give you the conclusions um, because I'm unable to give this a positive review and so I don't want to, you know, um, bait people into watching the whole video um, just only to get to the end where you know I say it didn't work out for me I didn't have a great experience so um, I'm gonna give you the main takeaways right now uh, and then you can watch the rest of the video for uh, some of the other things that I go over like sharpening and um, using the Kelly kettle and things like that. but so I want to say thank you to JXC JXO for um, giving me this to review that was very nice of them and also um, it was nice of them not to tell me what they wanted me to do um, or what they wanted me to say all they said was try it out and be honest in your feedback so that's what I'm going to do and the um, the other thing that they did that was nice was that you know they originally were going to send me a different model and when I said I was more interested in this one uh, they sent they sent this one to me so uh, first I'll I'll quickly go over the things that I like about it um, and for all these things the things that I like and the things that I didn't you know check out the rest of the video and there's more details but uh, just to summarize right now um, I like the fact that it's a slip fit slip fits um, are great because you know if they come loose you can typically just whack it uh, once or twice and it'll tighten up again and that's great if you know um, if you're in a situation where you know you don't have another axe or you don't have time to 
rehang one, or you don't have the equipment with you to rehang one. It's great if you end up leaving it someplace um, or storing it someplace, like the back of a truck, uh, where it's, it's exposed to elements and changes in humidity, and a wedge hung axe will tend to loosen up and then not be usable. This was pretty much guaranteed to be usable. So that's great if you're um, yeah, carrying it in the back of a truck or if you're a voyageur trading furs or whatever, there's, there's a reason why this design has stood the test of time. So that's number one. Uh, number two is the fact that this one has a hammer pole and most slip fit axes don't. And so that makes a um, balance a little bit more like a typical wedged poled uh, ax. And that's kind of nice, I think. And of course, a hammer pole is, can be very handy um, in all sorts of situations. Uh, so I, I like that. The other thing that I liked about this uh, is that the head is heavy. So the head is 750 grams. And that puts it in range of a lot of bushcrafting axes or um, kind of trail maintenance axes. And so, you know, the kind of light utility axes. And so um, that means that, you know, I, I what I wanted to do was make a second handle for it. So another great thing about slip fits is you can have more than one handle. You can it's easy to swap them out. And so I wanted I wanted to try that, and um, I would have if I hadn't run into uh, the main thing that I did not like, and the reason why I can't give this a positive review, um, which is that once I put a carving edge on it, uh, it couldn't hold an edge because the steel was too soft. So uh, to me, that's the deal breaker. Um, I don't know if it's a problem with all of them or if it's just the one on, the one I have uh, happened to you know have something go wrong during tempering or during hardening. I don't know. Uh, all I can speak to is the one in my hand, but yeah, the steel is not really hard enough to use. So if you want details on what the angle was, the edge angle was, and what uh, what happened that was causing me problems, you know, check out the rest of the video. But that's that's the gist of it. Um, the other things I could change quick, I uh, would change quickly, is I would change um, the angle of the bit relative to the, to the eye or the socket. I would, so I would tip it down. Um, for some reason, I, it's it's tilted up a little bit, and I think that looks a little strange, but it also feels strange. It's not a big deal on a on a one-handed axe, especially when used for carving. You know, some carving hatchets are tilted up that way on purpose, but I don't care for it. Um, I think it would be better if the bit lined up better with the arc of the swing. And it had either, you know, an intermediate hang or even, you know, I prefer a slightly closed hang. Uh, but that's not a big deal in terms of, you know, whether or not it's usable. And the other thing that I would change, again, not a big deal because it's still it's still usable, but I would make the, um, the handle a little wider so that it can make contact all around the eye. So right now it's not quite wide enough to touch the sides. And that means the fit is not as is not going to be as tight as it would be if it if it was touching all the way around so i would change that but otherwise the main thing is um, i really hope that um, that they're able to get these you know hard enough to use so <laughs> hopefully uh, hopefully that can be that can be done and until that happens um or until i find out that you know the uh other um, other versions of this are are harder. Uh, I can't recommend it. Um, but I do want to thank JXE JXO again uh, for you know sending it uh, to me uh, to review, and I hope that the feedback was helpful, and I hope that the review was informative uh, for you guys. And if you're interested in more of the details, other stuff, you know, me using the Kelly kettle. Um, my trick using my phone to measure the angle of the edge or uh, how I treat the handle, um, how I use a file to put a, uh, a particular grind on the bevel, uh, check out the rest of the video. Uh, and otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed the review. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do to get this ready to use is address the fact that the handle wiggles a little bit. So I don't know if that shows up. Oh, yeah, you can see that. So this is um, something that's pretty normal with a slip fit. It's very easy to fix. It's one of the advantages of a slip fit. So um, if I tap it out, you could see that 
there's a bit of rubbing right here but not elsewhere so the the handle is not making contact with the head all the way around and so what we want to do is scrape down or wrap down everywhere it rubs and that way um, it'll cinch up tight so that the head is touching it all the way around so um, and also this is this has uh, varnish or urethane on it um, which is again normal for shipping and things like that or in a store wherever you buy a store-bought axe or oftentimes also any axe is shipped um, they'll do that and partly that just helps keep the handle clean it's just a good idea um, from a from a distribution uh, perspective to put varnish on but varnish is not that comfortable um, so I'm going to take it off um, and I'm going to use a, a card scraper for that so yeah that's the first job is get this tight um, one thing with a, a handle like this is sometimes the head might not be totally symmetrical <laughs> but the handle looks like it is and so I'm going to be taking it on and off a bunch and I want to keep it the same way around every time so I'm just going to mark a little arrow so I know a little arrow goes towards the blade every time and I don't have to figure it out. So yeah, let's uh, let's get this scraped and fitted. So I'm using a card scraper uh, to do this, but there's lots of things you could use. Uh, ben Scott, he uses a pair of scissors, he uses the spine of scissors, you can also use the spine of a knife. Uh, you can use a piece of glass as long as you don't cut yourself and uh, if you want to use a piece of glass actually you can sand off the edges of except for the edge that you're using um, to, to make it safer to handle and then if you if you find the direction of the grain which probably changes in different parts of the handle um, you can usually get a smooth a smooth finish with the card scraper, certainly smooth enough. Um, I will say, I do not know what kind of wood this is. I'll have to look and see if they say on the website. I know uh, for some of their other hatchets, they use, at least they uh, say they use European beef, and others maybe hickory, I'm not sure. But this is neither of those. This has very prominent medullary rays, um, and it is. Um, so it's not hickory and it's ring porous so it's not beech so yeah I'm not 100% sure but you know there's a lot of different woods that could work well except for not ash uh, that could work well so I certainly don't know them all um, but this isn't one that I've used before could be kind of oak I'm not sure but uh, we'll give it a try. Feels hard. You know, one thing is that you can use um, types of wood for short handles uh, that you can't uh, use or don't aren't as well suited to long handles. So, for example, like hard maple, sugar maple, rock maple, black maple. Okay, the hard maples are certainly hard enough to make an axe handle out of, but they often a little brittle on impact but for a short handle that doesn't that doesn't matter as much so you can have a hatchet handle made of a hard maple So I gave it a couple taps with the mallet. It already, it already feels solid. So one of the nice things about these is the handle doesn't have to be fit perfectly for it to still be useful. You know, any um, any slip fit axe, the the fitting is just less of a priority in general. 
So as long as it fits well enough that it doesn't wiggle and is straight, you know, um, you're you're good to go. But I am going to seat this on a little further um, and see if I can get it to stay solid for the long term. So here you can see. I hope. Let's see. Let's look at the screen. Is it focusing? Anyway, hopefully you can see where it's rubbing. So right there, there, and there. So I've got a forehand rasp, um, and I just work wood down the layer a little bit. Okay, and I've got my little arrow, so I know which way goes is the blade end. So now it's on a little further. Still doesn't wiggle. I can still see a gap. Um, so I'm going to work on this a few more times, but I don't think I'm, I'm going to make you guys stick with me for that. But that's that's the idea. All right, so I fitted the handle as much as I'm going to do. Now I'm going to put a little bit of boiled linseed oil on it. One coat for now. And then leave this to dry for 45 minutes or so. Wipe off the excess and then I should add more coats later, but it'll be enough for now. So, it's got a very obtuse grind and it's still had a burr on it. So it does need to be touched up uh, before it can be used. It's got a bit of a clear coating uh, to protect it from rust during shipping and stuff. I don't really worry about that. I don't try to take it off because it comes off as you sharpen and use it uh, pretty quickly. So, I'm just going to do a, a touch up. It's got. A convex grind comes to a very, very obtuse point. You might. I'm, I'm following the existing edge. I'm just going to refine it a bit, and uh, then I'll try it out, and then I'll and then I'll change it to uh, meet my my needs. So the first thing I'm going to do is make myself up a little bit of kindling. It's nice to have a hatchet out here for this. So uh, the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to cook breakfast. going to make myself a little bit of coffee and some oatmeal using the Kelly kettle here, um, which is a great little device, but not what the video is about. Um, it's good to have a hatchet so you can, you know, I really just need twigs. I don't really need an axe or a hatchet, but it's been raining a lot the last week. And so all the twigs are pretty wet. So it's nice to be able to take some things like some of these chips uh, and split them up and get uh, some, some kindling because at least some of them are dry inside. Now, with the edge I've got on this is very obtuse, so you know it can take a lot of abuse, but it, it would be better for this kind of job, in fact, pretty much for every job, if it was a finer edge. So that's what I'm going to do. I think after this. I think I'm going to put a finer edge on it and then um, I might try and make another handle. I'll use this to make the handle. I'm going to use a lighter <laughs> because 
It's my breakfast, and I don't care if it's uh, not a very bushcrafty breakfast. I don't have a... I don't have a fire rod. Now if you can figure out which way the wind is blowing, then you generally try to point, there's a little opening there. Like that, you try to point that in the direction of the wind. That really helps it get going. So for today's breakfast, got instant coffee and some oatmeal, quick oats, got cranberries, dried cranberries, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, pepitas, uh, that'd be pumpkin seeds, and uh, a glob of peanut butter is hidden in there, and uh, I recommend that uh, people put uh, a little bit of peanut butter in their oats, it's delicious. Okay, water's almost boiled. The uh, Galagula kettle's great. You don't actually need a hatchet or anything uh, to use it because you can just feed it with little sticks. Although, you know, the... The... Uh, <laughs> The bigger a little fire you build in there, you know, the faster it, uh, the faster it goes. You can also cook over it. You gotta watch it, it heats stuff up fast. It's, uh, you can burn stuff on it. I, I wish I first remembered to bring a spoon. I have to make this thick so I can eat it with a stick. Should be done once it's got a little time to sit.
So this worked all right for splitting little kindling and for scraping some shavings for lighting fire, but I think it really does need uh, a different grind on it than the one it came with. Uh, even after sharpening, you know, it's just it's just too it's too fat. So you know, the advantage is a very durable disadvantage is it's uh, not uh, not very choppy uh, or uh, slicey and. I think I'm, I'm going to probably take it back to 20 degrees with a micro bevel because that's the grind I like for lots of stuff. And the other thing I think I want to do um, is to make a second handle for it. So I like this handle, but um, I would like to try it with a longer handle. I think that the head is heavy enough, um, in fact I'm sure it is, uh, that will do well as a light two-handed axe. So, I am going to try that. Um, I'll sharpen it first, and then I'll use I'll use uh, this axe to carve its own handle. So that's what I'm going to do next. In the meantime, we finish eating my oatmeal, which is very good, with a stick. I kind of carved it into a little spatula, and uh, I hope that. Ethical Axe, if he's watching, uh, appreciates this uh, and my efforts. It's a, it's a start. Pretty good for instant. Don't remember what kind it is. So what I'm doing here is just a bit of draw filing basically moving this off sideways and that helps me maintain an angle so I don't know you know I kind of know from experience like what's gonna get me close to 20 degrees it doesn't really matter if it's exact it's just for me anyway but uh, typically what I do is I'll just do this and then once I've done both sides I'll check and see if it's uh, if it's there and if it's if it's not there then I will uh, file some more. One thing you can do also is to like switch between draw filing and push filing. So draw filing helps you maintain like a totally flat angle uh, that's consistent. Uh, push filing I think removes material a little bit faster. One of the issues with push filing is that uh, it's very easy to cut yourself. So the, there's a couple ways to avoid doing that. One is to use a file with a guard, uh, which is safer. And the other, and you can do both, is to get a pair of cut resistant gloves, um, which I'm gonna put on for draw filing because uh, I have cut myself before, and I guess uh, I just have to learn everything the hard way. So, you know, don't be like me. So yeah. Some sort of safety is really a really good idea for push filing because it's only a matter of time until you cut yourself and you can cut yourself pretty badly. It's not hard. So I'll do a little bit more push filing and then I'll draw file it some more to keep the angle the way I want. And what I'm doing is filing it down but I'm not filing at the edge. So the edge is right there. Once I get down to the edge, then I'm done on this side. I'll do the same on the other side. Then check the angle and uh, see if I want to make it more acute or if I'm good with where it's at. And when I am draw filing, I use a rag. I just fold it up to give me the height that I, I think is about right. Uh, and that just keeps it consistent.
Another advantage of put, doing some of it, at least by push filing, is that you're spreading the wear over more of the file. So you're not just wearing one spot on the file. It kind of means you get more out of it. Because they do wear out. So I'm leaving scratches because there's a piece of hard steel stuck in here. So this, that's one thing you might want to get for yourself uh, is a file card like this. And it just cleans up the file. Especially actually if you use it on wood, then it's really, really nice to be able to unclog a file. In fact, it's pretty much required. Sometimes if you find that you're getting a lot of uh, kind of shards of steel falling off and uh, kind of gumming up your file job, uh, you can try going the other way. Depends on the file, but sometimes it makes a difference in how it, uh, how it cuts. So my filing is pretty much reached the edge, or very, very close to it. All along, all along the edge of the blade. So now it's time to turn it over and do the other side. All right, so this is pretty good. I've got it at 20 degrees. Uh, where is it? Right here. First try. So <laughs> I guess I, I really know how to eyeball 20 degrees. At least close enough. So now it's it's just filed and I'm going to stone the edge. Um, normally I'd also stone, you know, the whole bevel. Uh, smooth it out a little bit from the file scratches. I'll do that later if I feel like it. I just want to, I want to get this going and uh, try it out. So you can see the the file is a great big wire edge. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm going to I'm going to make um, the secondary bevel, the micro bevel, and I'm going to use uh, stones to do that. So I've just got uh, cut up King Waterstone. So thanks to Stephen Edholm at Skill Cult for the idea to do that. And I just take it and I uh, do a slightly steeper angle. Um, I don't measure it. <laughs> I just have a sense for, you know, how I normally do it. And go like that. Just try to keep it consistent. And, and then do the other side. And I'll show you when it's done. So I guess just for information, this is uh, 250 grit. And this is a thousand grit, and uh, that's as far as I'm going to take it. And then I'll strap it, and then we'll see if it's sharp. All right. Now I just got a strap. So this, I just made this out of a old belt. Um, you don't need to spend a lot of money on a lot of this stuff. It works great. It's got a little bit of green compound. Which helps it polish the edge. And of course you don't have to do this and you can just, you know, remove the burr with a piece of wood or do like Buck and Billy does and use your palm, the skin of your palm. I don't think my palms are as, uh, as tough as his, but let's see if it'll, uh, if it'll cut paper. Remove the paper. No. <laughs> cut. It'll definitely cut paper. Okay, paper test. All right. 
cuts the paper. Okay, definitely sharp enough to use for a bit of carving, which is what's next. So the piece of what I'm going to make the handle out of is this scrap piece of white ash heartwood. If you, if you see my other videos, um, you might know about the white ash that I cut down last winter, and so this is a scrap piece from that. And the first thing I'm going to do is kind of make a, a rectangular cross-section piece that then I can trace the handle shape better. So let's start by taking the corner pin here. Well, it's glancing and that's not the fault of my grind. The steel is soft. What's happened is that it turns out that um, the edge won't hold. So you can see there where the, the edge is just bending over um, in use. And just from uh, a little bit of carving and the edge angle the main bevel is 20 degrees and the edge angle is um, steeper I haven't measured it but I will for the sake of documentation uh, I'll figure out as close as I can what that what that micro bevel secondary bevel angle is um, because it's it won't hold um, but it should hold you know if it's steeper than 20 degrees carving white ash you know a, a good quality steel that's properly hardened should have no problems with that and this is having problems so I don't know if there's an issue with the steel quality or just with the hardening or tempering but it's it's not hard enough to do work um, with in wood which it should do because that's, uh, you know, that's what an axe is for. So, I am not going to finish carving the handle because, you know, that's a, f that's a fair amount of work uh, for an axe that's not going to hold an edge that I can't really use. So, I'm going to, I'm going to give them some feedback um, and hopefully uh, they'll make improvements. So, I'm going to do my best to measure the angle just for... You know, feedback purposes. Probably really loud because my voice is right beside the mic. Alright, this seems to be this seems to be the angle. So I'm gonna use my I'm going to use my phone to measure it. So I'm using an app called Photo Protractor. Super simple. All right. I'd say that angle is about 35 degrees. 
36 there, but you know, there's yeah, yeah, I would say that's 35. I don't know if that's showing up. So that is um, definitely, you know, it should be with an edge angle like that, I shouldn't be getting edge damage. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, but hopefully they're not all like this, or if they are, hopefully they they fix it. So, you know, I tried to review this fairly. I mean, it is a budget. Um, is it, a, it is a budget tool. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not um, as being as picky as I would be if it was a hundred and fifty or two hundred dollar axe. It's definitely, it's not that, but. You know, I think that having the steel sufficiently hard for it to be usable is is the minimum. And uh, this particular one uh, didn't meet that threshold, so I can't recommend it. Um, if you're interested in details of my experience with it, then uh, watch the rest of the video. But if not, uh, that is the unfortunately the main takeaway.